Typing portraiture, e-products, auto editing, e-templates, educational videos for shooting smarter, not harder at the photo channel pro. Hey, it's Crockett. Welcome to Crockettville. This is the result of what I've been working on the last six weeks. We have developed a hybrid studio. I'm sharing studio space with my good friend, Mr. Mark Hauser, who does a lot of black and white work. So we're focusing on how we're going to create our eCard Pro e-products, the replacement to the business card, and how we're going to do that efficiently. Our goal is we're going to run 2,000 eCard Pro jobs through the studio on the west side of Chicago in the year 2014. So we want to have a rather high production, but of course we need super nice quality. One of our big hang-ups, as you can tell from watching this, is audio. Defining who can be where and how much noise they can make during a shoot like this is really a big issue. We've experimented with how we're going to isolate each one of the shooting bays so they don't pick up any sound from other spots, but it turns a little too cave-like. So we'd like to have a big kind of whole, uh, open atmosphere in the studio here, but we also want to make sure that we record good quality audio. So first up is I'm shooting what you're seeing right here now is a GH3 and Louie's over the other side with the Fuji XE2. We're taking the audio off my lavalier microphone. It's going to a Sennheiser wireless receiver receiver. Then that's going to the Asden mixer, which I'm going to show you a little bit later, and it's pouring directly into the GH3. Now, I've also got a bunch of other options, right? One of the other ones that I like a lot is the directional microphone, the shotgun microphones. This is a Sennheiser that takes a battery down on the bottom, so it'll have its own phantom power. Now, if I use a mixer like the Asden here, I don't have to use this battery, but this clips on with a uh, XLR cable, which means that's a beautiful connector, and it mounts into the light source. Sounds crazy, right? It actually works. Also, I got one more option. You know the desk mic that I use a lot on the vlog posts? This is a, the brand is called Blue. It's a Bluebird microphone, though it too needs phantom power from the mixer, and it'll connect up with a XLR cable. Now, it can be in the shot if the client wants it, but most don't. This has such wonderful range, particularly for people like me that have a little deeper voice, that as long as we get it out of the frame, like right about there, it's going to sound terrific. Well, we're finding that each one of these recording uh, microphone recorders have their own set of character issues, right? Let me show you how we're making them work. First up is when we deciding what we're going to shoot. If we've got five or six e-card customers coming in, if there's only one in the studio at a time, it's really not that big of a deal. But if we've got two or three or four stacking up, right, that tends to be a bit of chaos. People get a little self-conscious maybe if they, people, other people hear what they're speaking, right? We're finding that when people pose for a still photograph, their confidence level and self-confidence is rather high. But when they're doing something that's kind of high pressured like an e-card, they can be a little nervous a little quick. So first up is, here's the camera. This is the microphone from Panasonic with the little fuzzy sock on there. That really doesn't need to be there, but it does attract attention from little kids. So when we're shooting little kids, we got it good there. Also, we get to kind of cover it up with the whole fluffy thing. It's a conversation starter as well. This is the Asden battery powered mixer. It's an FMX hyphen DSLR. It runs on four batteries. I don't like it. The build quality is not that good. It's maybe 300 bucks. The switches are pretty good, but it's hard to deal with this thing. So I'm going to replace this. Next, when we use the boom microphone, we've got two options with that. We've got a little mount that it goes on the camera stand so it can just lean forward. Why? Well, this is only going to record mostly from the end here, but it's only going to record really good sounding audio when and it's from three to five feet away. Any further, it sounds real hollow. Any close, it gets a little bit too gaspy. So this lavalier is going to work great right here, right? And it doesn't want to be any further away than about six inches from a person's mouth. This one goes three feet to five feet. See, this is what all these different microphones do. This one will work a foot away to maybe six feet away. I do notice that once you take this off the camera and use the extension cable that comes with it, you drop about two stops worth of audio. <laughs> also, another cool thing about the stick microphones is we can mount them in our light source. Louie, come a little closer here, will you? Inside this light, we've got two LEDs 
and this can mount perfectly right there. The customer does see that little dot. See that little dot? They will see that little dot, but because these LEDs don't make any sound and they don't generate a whole lot of heat, this microphone can be right there and guess what? The shot, the type of lighting that I do in this shot, that main light is between three and five feet away from the person. Perfect for this microphone. Now when we want to use the super high quality microphone, then that needs its own boom. So we need to run that in as close as we can get it and keep it out of the shot or put it back into the shot. Now I do find out there are some times that I'm going to blend two different kinds of microphone performance through this mixer and I can do that. I can have the left channel for instance be coming off the lav and I can have the right channel coming off the shotgun. And if I want to balance between the two of those I can. I don't find any big advantage of using stereo, right, staying with a left and right channel. If I want to I can run dual mono just as well as stereo and use two different devices for that. My suggestion to you is if you're going to set up a studio where you're going to be working with e-cards or any sort of hybrid is concentrate on how you want your audio to sound. Right? When you're hearing me now, you're hearing a lavalier in my, the bouncier part of my studio, plus I've got my foam core fill boards here, right? That's going to amplify the sound echo a little bit too. So shaping the sound is something that I don't have conquered yet. Light, I got it. Workflow, no problem. Camera, piece of cake. But I'm not happy with my audio yet, so follow me as I go through the next couple of months of figuring out how the heck I'm going to make my audio work, right? So from Housertown.com slash Crockettville slash whateverville, Crockett saying thanks for helping us out. We appreciate everything. And uh, by the way, uh, if you're not involved on our LinkedIn page, if you're a professional, you want to get into hybrid photography on a professional level, we hold a professionals only group on LinkedIn. You can jump, uh, jump in and ask to be brought into the hybrid photography using mirrorless cameras group. And we'll be glad to accept you. And there's where we're discussing with all kinds of other photographers that are doing just the same thing I am all over the world, trying to figure out how we're going to make a buck with hybrid photography. So thanks again. Bye. Talking portraiture, e-products, auto editing, e-templates. Educational videos for shooting smarter, not harder at the photochannel.pro.